a man who's helped us uh, set the scene at the Demons now for a number of years on Trade Radio, is about to join us again. Josh Marnie, General Manager of the Melbourne Football Club when it comes to the football department. Josh, uh, thanks as always for your, your time. A lot to wade through your club between now and close of play, Thursday of next week. And might just start our chat today uh, around the machinations involving Ben Brown, the North Melbourne player who's identified the Demons uh, as his club of choice. And what is it you're able to, to tell us with regards to his progress to becoming a Demon? Yeah, g'day, Damo, and g'day, guys. Uh, thanks for Hi having Josh. me. Um, yeah, it was the first of all, it was, you know, it's really good that um, you know, Ben Brown was able to nominate his, us as his club. You know, it became probably late in the year, it became um, known to us that he might be available, and then to go through that process and to get him to select us, um, we think it's a really important role for us. And We've only just started um, conversations with the kangaroos, but hopefully we get that done in the next uh, week and a half. Have you got a feel for what they, uh, as in, as in a, a very clear feel for what they want, and what is it you're able to tell us and our listeners about that uh, scenario? No, it's probably pretty preliminary to the discussions at the moment. So, you know, we've had discussions over picks and potential players. So, um, yeah, we really haven't got into the, the, the great detail about that one yet. I know it's an inexact science, but I, I do ask this question. Is it a first-round uh, potential that they're, they're after when it comes to Ben Brown? No, I don't think it'll be a first round that we're looking at um, with Ben. That's, that hasn't been in any discussions we've had. Okay, so beyond that. And are you looking at uh, are they looking at other players as well, or is it, is it just going to be done in isolation of Ben wanting to become a demon? I think what we're finding uh, this year, there's so many... Um, Things working with different clubs at the moment, and, and added to that, we're not sure on list sizes yet, and what sort of picks people are going to have available. So um, I think that'll play out a little bit over the next few days. Okay, uh, Tom McDonald and, and Oscar McDonald, we spoke with their management last week, and, and Alex McDonald was quite open about the uh, potential for both those players to not be at, at Melbourne next year. What is it you're able to tell us uh, about those two? Yeah, I think Alex explained it really well. Um, you know, Tom's been a a very good player for us, and it's, you know, he's played a really important role, first of all, in defence and, and then up forward. And it's fair to say the last couple of years he struggled with, with form and, and with injury. Um, we know that he's a very good player. And obviously the impact of bringing Ben Brown into a role that he's been playing um, does change things a little bit. But um, we've had conversation with Tom probably since uh, the later part of the year about how do we get him back to playing the way he played two years ago, whether he has to change his program a little bit. He, he came back a little bit heavy after the COVID period. He's already dropped some weight, worked on his agility. So we know he's got the ability to come back and, and play the, the footy that he can play for us. Or if the option is that it's another club, um, we've been happy to look at that as well. Have you had conversations with another club about him at this stage? Uh, not at this stage. No, we've just said to Tom to, for him and, and Alex to go and, and see if there's any interest. And then um, we'll get together in the next couple of days. Josh, um, you traded out your future first pick uh, last year to get back into the draft um, and select, I think it was Pickett. Are you were you happy with that result? And are you looking to to get back into the first round this year? Yeah, the time when we, we made that decision, we saw that you know this year was going to be impacted a fair bit by academy players, and and that's played out probably the, it will play out the way we probably thought it would. Um, so to be able to make that trade with the Kangaroos initially, and then another trade with Fremantle later on, effectively we turned uh, that pick into, into Cosy Pickett and Trent Rivers, who yep. you know, both of that impacted AFL level already. Mm. Um, yeah, I think, like anything, you always want to get as early as you can into the draft, and hopefully out of the, some of the trades you may be doing, uh, we might improve our position from 25 at the moment, but um, yeah, we'll wait and see how that plays out. That was sort of a win-win for everyone. Cosy's going to be a very good player for you, and so is Rivers, uh, from what I can see, and... Uh, that pick looks like being a good pick for North as well. Uh, it was a North that in, ended up with it. So, you know, they probably yep. thought you might have pushed back up in the eight. So um, you've lost Braden Pruce. Is that that's going ahead to GWS, Josh? Yeah, we, we, we expected at this stage that we'll go ahead. Um, so I think there's been a fair bit of talk about Braden and first of all choosing to come to, to Melbourne. And what I can say is under two years of working under, under Gorney and Greg Stafford, He's got the confidence to now that he, he thinks he can be a number one ruck. Yep. And he's got an opportunity through the Giants. So, you know, the Giants need a number one ruck. So, yeah, we've only yeah, you had should, one conversation so far. Yeah, you should get a good deal on that. Uh, look, uh, yeah, he's ready to go and they desperately need a ruck. But uh, probably leaves you a little bit exposed. Uh, Gorn hasn't missed much in the last two years. You've got Jackson there who 
obviously he's going to play in the ruck sometime down the track. I, I think if you lost Gorn for any period of time, you really wouldn't want to be throwing Jackson in the ruck. You're looking for, uh, you know, the 25 to 30-year-old. He might be able to um, prop up and, and compete for you if uh, you happen to lose Gorn at, at all. Yeah, we are. Um, and there's a, a few guys in the market at the moment that we're speaking to. Um, and hopefully that if it's not through this trade period over the off-season, we'll be able to add someone to play exactly that role you mentioned. But we obviously we don't want them to play too much because no. we want to have Gorney and, and exactly. Luke Jackson playing quite a bit of footy. But um, if they have to play, we want someone who's mature yeah. enough to come in and, and play that role for us. Um. Yeah, some blokes have been on list for 10 years. <laughs> Played about 10 games. <laughs> in that, it's an advantage in that, being tall. In that role. All you have to do is compete. Hey, uh, Josh, <laughs> can you tell us about um, your role there? We know uh, there's been some major changes with the coaching, your role. Uh, can you can you give us a rundown of what's what's happened there? I know a, a few people have read it. Uh, it's been in the paper, but uh, I'd like to hear it from you. Yeah, so I think um, it's not unusual for clubs to to split the role of the GM of football is becoming bigger and bigger over the years with introductions of, of AFLW and, and second tier competitions and probably more so as well for us as a club. We've got to focus down at Casey and, and building a um, you know, football hub down there as well. Mm. So really it's basically just splitting my role into two. Mm. Um, Richo will be a big support for, for Goody and be his right-hand man in all these conversations. Mm. And then I'll be more working closely with, with Tim Lamb and Jason Taylor in the recruiting and list management area. And yep. also, you know, looking at some exciting opportunities around facilities for the club as well. So you're sort of uh, going to be spending a lot of time with all the other staff members, I assume, spending more time with them and having that communication with them and, um, and instead of spending less time with the football department, I imagine. Is that how it looks? Yeah, that's right. And I yeah. think, um, as I said, most clubs have, have started yeah. to go down this path with, with splitting up the roles and probably depends on the skills get of different people of how they're split up. There's a lot of rules and regulations you have to know these days, isn't there? <laughs> it's crazy there stuff. Yeah. We're speaking with yeah, Josh. That's right. Speaking with Josh Marnie, the Melbourne GM of football. Josh, a lot going on at uh, the Collingwood Football Club. Um, the names Adam Trelaw, Jaden Stevenson, Mason Cox, Tom Phillips have all been thrown around. They're clearly gettable should a club uh, want them. Any of those four names appeal to the Demons? Oh, I think Adam Trelaw would be a very handy player for us. Um, he's a quality player. Um, unlikely we'd be in a position to be able to get him, but um, you know, a quality player. And obviously Tom Phillips plays a role as well um, on a wing that you know, we've looked for different wingers at different stages. We've added Ed Langdon and Adam Tomlinson last year. Um, we think we've got some people on our list, but you know, that's, he's certainly someone we may look at at different stages as well, depending on this period. So, so he, he, he may well become the, the Isaac Smith focus. Smith obviously choosing Geelong over the Demons. Phillips could become that person. Yeah, there's a few different things that um, you know, attracted us to, to Isaac. Um, you know, his experience, you know, he was a free agent, so it wouldn't cost you anything. Mm. Um, and he played, obviously, that role. So we saw him as pretty unique compared to a lot of the other people that play that type of role. But, uh, you know, Tom Phillips is a proven proven player on a wing as well. So... If opportunities come up, you have to, to look at how you improve your list. Uh, we think we've got some people on our list that can play that outside role and wing. Um, but I think the guys sitting there will know that you don't close your, your mind to anything during this period. Yeah. Well, and, and, and as such, and as you moved to the moment ago, um, if it gets late in the piece and Adam Trelaw is still potentially gettable, you, you may go down that path as well. Yeah, I think it would be unlikely um, if we, to, for us to, to be able to get to that opportunity. Sure. Sure. Uh, Nathan Jones going around again for, for what will be a season that will, for him anyway, hopefully bring in a, a game number 300 for his career. Was it was it line ball, that decision? Oh, probably, firstly, the first conversation, Jones, he didn't want it to be anything to do with playing game number 300. Um, he didn't want this to be a, a token year. Um, he wanted to, to earn the role and to, for us to be clear on that we knew, we thought that the club would be a better club with Nathan Jones in it. And that's our decision in the end. Um, he started to do some, some coaching with the young guys this year. Um, he helped a lot of them in their development. So we think just having Jonesy as a player, as a coach, as a mentor, is a really important part of us for next year. And if he, if he gets to 300, it'll be a great result. But it's certainly um, not the, the main reason for, for giving him a, a, another season to play. Josh, uh, thanks uh, as always. You, you've always been uh, generous with your, your time and information on Trade Radio. You've done so again today. Set the scene for what lies ahead for the... 
The Melbourne Footy Club before close of play on the 2020 exchange period. And uh, we do thank you again, as always. No worries, Josh. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Josh.